Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa and I lead the museum experience team at Cincinnati Museum Center. Today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about 1960s fashion with you, focusing on the makeup. I'm going to be doing additional videos to talk about the hair and the fashion, but there's quite a bit of content for this look, so I thought it'd be easiest to break it into three segments. So today is all about the makeup. And in the 60s, the focus was highlighting the eyes. So today we're going to start with the brows. So people weren't plucking their brows in the 60s. It was more of a natural brow and if they were filling them in, it was in light feathery strokes. One thing that I've noticed from advertisements is that this part of the brow closest to the nose has more of a rounded shape. So I've gone in and I filled in both of my brows. Now for the eyes. I've taken a, a brush and I've used Too Faced Natural Lust um, for the shadows today. Um, really just use whatever you have around the house that has light pinks, uh, aqua colors, um, so a lightish green, a light blue, or a warm brown. So another palette that I like is Maybelline's um, The Blushed Nudes because it has some of those great um, light pink shades. This is a great aqua color and then it has some um, nice brown tones in here. But what I've applied is from this palette and I've used a light pink to go on the lid all the way up to my brow. From there, I've used a different tool. I, this works well for me. Really, you just have to use whatever brushes I think work best for you and how you apply eyeshadow. Um, someone might watch this video and be like, you don't wanna use that for, that's not what that tool is for, but it really works for me, so I need, uh, for this look something that has a little bit more of an angle to it and that's because you're going to take that warmer color whether it's that warm brown or a darker blue and you're going to not go exactly in the crease but uh, when you know, you're going to go right above the crease so i'm applying that um, brown color from here all the way just on top of the crease and I'm winging it out as I get towards the edge of my eye. Then I'm making sure that I wipe off the brown, cleaning that tool, and I'm going back in with a really light pink and applying it just on the lid here, closest to um, my lashes. And I'm not blending those colors. You're really keeping the definition of the color on the lid, that warm brown or that darker um, blue that's just right before the crease and then the lighter color that goes up to the brow. You're using lots of eyeliner both on the um, upper lash line and lower lash line. And the colors they would have utilized at the time are blacks and dark browns. One thing about the eyeliner is you are applying it and you're not connecting it at this outer corner of the eye. I don't know, it's probably a little bit hard to see, um, but I'm taking that corner out and winging it out on the upper lash line but then on the lower lash line you're drawing it and you're not connecting it to the upper you're actually winging it out and down it has a bit of an egyptian look to it and how the liner doesn't meet the wings out i don't know what i'm doing with my hands but it's not going to help you understand the shape um the other part of this is using lots of mascara and fake lashes. As I was trying to show you the eyeshadow <laughs> and the eyeliner, one of my lashes is moving. So it's, it is what it is today. Um, hopefully it'll hang in there with us though and stay on my eye. 
um, but you're using uh, lots of black mascara. Uh, if you've got fake lashes, give it a try. I like this particular brand. You're going to want to use a lash that's a little bit fuller, maybe not something that's quite like a natural lash, but um, has more oomph to it. At this time, people sometimes wore multiple pair of eyelashes to really make their eyes pop. Um, I just have on one pair today. And if you don't have fake lashes or you don't like putting on fake lashes, then just use multiple coats of mascara. And for those of you that are amazing at putting on eyeliner and fake lashes, like you have my respect because it's an area where I struggle. Um, I'm just really hoping this eyelash stays on for this video. So it's just gotta hang in there with me. All right. Another thing about the eyelashes is that Twiggy um, made it popular to uh, go in and fill in that lower lash line um, and sort of draw in some lashes. And I've tried to achieve that by just taking my mascara and when I'm applying it to the lower lash line and I've just taken it and I've tried to like use the brush to push together the lower lashes into clumps. If you look at advertisements of the time, you see this like really very thick application to mascara and allowing those lower lashes to clump. For the cheeks, at this point in time, product that had been used to highlight the cheeks had been referred to as rouge. And in the 60s, that changes and the term is changed to blusher. So the blusher that I've used today, um, is from uh, Urban Decay. It's called Afterglow and it's got this um, lovely, I'm using a combination here of this peach and I am using the light pink and this peach. So what I've done is Right on the bone, I've used the lighter peach color and underneath the cheekbone, I've used the light pink and you're not blending it a great deal. So in other decades, blush is applied in different areas or blended more. And this decade, it's really the main focus is creating that warm brown or um, pink tone um, right underneath the cheekbone. And the lips were kept pretty neutral because you have so much to the look uh, that with the eyes. So lipstick colors that are really popular at this time are peaches and light pinks. There are some darker pinks, um, almost like a fuchsia type of color, but primarily it's the lighter pinks and peaches. Yeah, and I think that's that's it. It's really just quite a bit of work to get the fake lashes on and to do the eyeshadow and the liner. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm enjoying replicating these different looks from the decades. I hope that you're enjoying. Um, I appreciate those of you that have attempted to follow along and do this and then posted a picture. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, and yeah, if you have a question about any of this, please um, let me know. You can comment of what information you'd like to know or a video that you would like in the future. Some of you have said that you wanted to uh, see a 1980s look and that is coming in the next few months. I am working my way through the decades so I'm going to do a few more 60s and then I'm going to do a 70s look here in a little bit. So stay tuned. Um, I hope you enjoy. I am enjoy enjoying this so much. I appreciate all of you and thank you so much for following the social um, media and online programming that Cincinnati Museum Center is doing. We really appreciate you and thank you so much. Um, as you know, right now we are closed and we do rely on ticket sales. Um, if you do have the means to give it this time, please consider um, and hopefully we'll see you soon once this is all over. Thank you so much. Bye.